Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. God is alive. Joy is alive. Love is alive and we are alive. God's spirit is within us and so let us celebrate this God of resurrection. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. I invite you to join in our opening hymn number 155 from Voices United, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, number 155. Easter morning to you all wherever you find yourself on this glorious day. It is an honor, a privilege, and such a joy to be gathered with you in this time and in this place. We give thanks this morning not only for the opportunity for 
us to gather here and to share this blessed morning with you. We also give thanks to have Kevin Swindon with us once again to share the big noise of triumph trumpeting from the heavens of the balcony this morning. Just a word of thanksgiving to all of you. Uh, last week when we shared the takeout pasta meal brought to you by the St. Andrew's Sunday Cooks, the Sassies, uh, we have the joyful opportunity to share that over 150 meals were donated to those in our community and just around $3,200 were raised in support of the ministries here at St. Andrew's United Church. And so thank you one and all, not only for those who participated in lovingly making that meal for the community, but also for all of you in participating in not only sharing a meal together, but also sharing with those in most in need. We do recognize that this is the traditional territories of the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe peoples. And it is with gratitude that we have the opportunity to celebrate Christ's resurrection within this place and to continue to offer new life and hope to all in this community of which we are a part of. Let us gather together in prayer. Loving, powerful God, joy floods over our souls on this day. Christ is risen. Fear is vanquished. And so open our hearts and our spirits to receive fully the joy which has been given to us. And let us celebrate the victory of Christ and the hope for our future. Grace-filled God, we do confess that we hear the good news but do not always receive it. We say we believe, but it is a struggle for us to live out each and every day. We look for signs of eternal life around us, but at times fail to trust in the new life given to us now. And so forgive us for our short-sightedness and narrow way of understanding. Roll away the stone that covers our hearts and minds so that we might truly receive the good news that Christ is risen. For it is in the name of the risen Savior we joyfully pray. Amen. And so this morning, may the peace of the resurrected Christ be with you all. And let us unabashedly share this greeting of peace with one another, wherever we find ourselves this day. We have good news to share this morning. Good news offered from the author of Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. And with open hearts and minds, with a willingness to listen and to reach out to what is good and holy around us and that surrounds us each and every day, let us listen for these words of joyful good news. For after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone 
and sat upon it. His appearance was like that of lightning and his clothes as white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Don't be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified, and he is not here. For he has been raised. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee, and there you will see him. This is my message to you. And so they left the tomb quickly with fear and with great joy and ran to tell his disciples. But suddenly Jesus was there and met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him and they took hold upon his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, for there I will see them. Herein is good and wise news. Thanks be to God.
Disaster movies have always been a popular sell. Whether it was the rendition of the original radio program of War of the Worlds that led into other thrillers and disasters like The Swarm or The Birds, leading into the 70s, the iconic airport films where the disaster of a jumbo jet was imminent, leading on to the seas and the Poseidon adventure, into the early 2000s with Titanic, 2011, huh, too apropos, the movie from Steven Sonnenberg, Contagion, which is about the airborne spread of a virus that threatens humanity. Up until the end of the Mayan calendar in 2012, where we get movies like The Day After Tomorrow, the whole Terminator series, you name it, disaster seems to sell. In all of those disasters, there's a character that rises up to leadership and in some form or fashion says to those who, who are in the midst of the terror of whatever is happening, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. We will make it through this time together. Have faith and don't be afraid. Well, within our gospel uh, tradition, those three words, don't be afraid, have such significance. Because within the good news, whenever the phrase, don't be afraid, is uttered, good news is to follow. Don't be afraid, Zechariah. You will bear a son, and you will name him John. Don't be afraid, the angel says to Mary upon learning of her impending pregnancy. Don't be afraid, shepherds. I bring you good news of joy that shall be for all people, the angel says. Don't be afraid, Joseph, to take Mary as your wife. Her baby is conceived by the Holy Spirit. Name him Jesus. He's going to be the one to save all people. Don't be afraid, the angel says to Mary and the other Mary this morning. Because this angel, this messenger from God, knows how to make an entrance. He comes in with a flourish. He's just not a regular type angel. One of the many angels that God has to to share either good news or challenge with the people who live within God's creation. No, this is a buff angel. You can imagine this angel just absolutely having chiseled figures, just a washboard stomach, big biceps, in dazzling white, looks absolutely fantastic, and wears a big gold chain around his angelic net neck that says go with God this is an angel to be reckoned with because this angel has the power of the Holy Spirit beside him this angel can roll away the stone and not only roll it away but has such a fantastic lateral well lateral is this way jump that this angel jumps or maybe even flies upon the top of this stone, sits down with legs crossed, and says, go and have a look. This is an angel with an attitude. And after he rolls back that stone and sits upon it and crosses his angelic legs and arms, he glances over to the guards, this must be, again, a very imposing angel because the guards are filled with terror. And they run. The angel didn't say, don't be afraid to the guards, for they were very afraid. He says, don't be afraid to Mary and Mary. 
It's as if the angel is saying to those guards and to everyone who can hear, not only then but today, the angel is saying, take that, Caiaphas, take that, Pilate, what God thinks about your efforts to put the Messiah in a tomb. A tomb as a prison for the Prince of Peace, the Son of God? I don't think so. Think again. Not going to happen today. And then for his main message, he turns his bright angelic eyes towards Mary Magdalene and the other Mary and says, don't be afraid, because I know who it is that you are looking for. Jesus, who is crucified. Jesus is no longer here. Jesus has been raised from the dead, as he said he would. It's difficult to not have some anxiety or fear when the earthquakes of life are experienced by you, me, others, anywhere. Earthquakes usually are followed by seismic shifts that change things forever. You can't go back to what was before. Remember the days when it was all the rage, a big one that was going to happen in California, and California was just going to slip into the Pacific Ocean. Imagine trying to go back and reverse what had occurred. It hasn't occurred yet. We hope it never occurs. But earthquakes can be such massive and seismically changing events that they alter life forever. They can't be undone. We know what it's like to experience the earthquakes of life in many of its different forms. At one time or another, we've all experienced the earthquake of loss. Whether it's loss of a loved one, loss in a relationship, loss of a child, a loss of hope, a loss of dignity, a loss of opportunity, the loss of a close and loving friend. We've been living through this earthquake and this seismic shift of a pandemic that has just continued to knock people down again and again and again and again and we keep being looking forward in hope to a day when things will go back to normal yet things going back to normal can never be the same as what they were because of the shift and the changes and the challenges that people have faced. I mean, it's absolutely heart-wrenching as I kind of scrolled through some social media over the last couple of days with our, our latest lockdown in this third wave. Small businesses and people who lit work in the service industry and owners of those businesses, I don't know how they can find a way to look forward to a hopeful future. The absolutely devastation to people's lives is not fully going to be realized until after this earthquake has settled. Because the vision of what we have going forward, yes, it's hopeful, but here we find ourselves again in the midst of the aftershocks of a pandemic that just doesn't seem to want to let go. How could we not feel a little bit afraid?
Yet on the other hand, we also experience the seismic shifts and the earthquakes of life that absolutely astound us and fill us with joy and hope and energy and passion. I have a niece that got engaged two days ago. No one saw it coming. We were absolutely astounded. An earthquake happened. When that ring was placed upon her finger, there was such joy. And we look forward in hope and possibility to a life shared together. Maybe you had a dream of, of your soulmate. And you could never quite make out their face, but you knew deep within your heart, within that dream that you had, that it was going to happen. And then on that wedding day, as you looked down the aisle, there she was. And the earthquake of love and emotion flooded you with such joy. Small little earthquakes happen all the time in acts of goodness and compassion and empathy. We can't underestimate what it means for someone in need to receive as something as inconsequential to maybe you and me, a pasta meal, with no conditions attached. Earthquakes of emotion can come over us when we hear anthems of faith. I mean, I just have to hold it together every time I hear that opening few bars of Jesus Christ is risen today. We hardly ever get to sing it except on Easter morning, but it holds such a power within us that it fills us. We begin to shake and rattle within our souls just a little bit, and it's a flood of emotion that comes out. Don't be afraid. At the beginning of this pandemic, we sang those words every Sunday in prayer. Don't be afraid, for my love is stronger. My love is stronger than all your fears. Don't be afraid. My love is stronger. And I will always promise, promise to always be near. To the Gospel of Matthew at the very moment of Jesus' death. The curtain that shielded the Ark of the Covenant from all of the people of faith was torn in two. No matter how proficient we are at sewing things back together, binding them that which has been broken, there is always the knowledge that it is not the same as what it was. For something has happened, and that something that has happened is new. There will be challenges whichever new direction, whatever road, whatever jaunty trail we travel. But regardless of whether they are resurrection moments, earthquake moments in life, ones that bring us anxiety or fear, great joy or possibility, you cannot keep the love, the grace, the peace, the compassion, the joy, the presence, the grace and forgiveness, the absolute love of God from not being a part of everything and every moment.
And so today we celebrate that resurrection, that promise of new life, that new opportunity, the new possibilities that come with all of the earthquakes of life. And when we are open to that, we ask ourselves, not only this day and every day, what are we to make of these days of great joy, of possibility, even within the midst of the challenges of which we all face? What are we to make when the day comes where the graves are opened, when the dead are awakened and life refuses to be contained? It is in those very days in the moment that we celebrate you, Jesus. Because you have made it so abundantly clear that death does not have the last word. Because you have filled us again and again with hope and with faith. Because you have given us a vision of new possibilities and new realities of new ways of being, so that we may open our minds to believe what we cannot explain. Open our hearts to the hope which we cannot see and open our lives to live and to love in the midst of all the challenge and the despair of which life offers. But within this, let resurrection happen today and every day. For God, you are with us. We lift our voices to speak out this great love we lift them up with joyful acclamation. For it is right and it is good and a joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, O God of joy, God of hope, God of life, God of resurrection. And so, living God, time after time, you draw us here to this table to inspire us, to feed us, and to save us. Especially when our love fails, you are here, steadfast and true. For you created all of this creation, this world, and you called it time and time and time again good. You created us to proclaim this goodness to all. And so we raise our voices together in praise. Jesus, how he healed the sick, fed the hungry, ate with the outcast, preached forgiveness and peace. It was at this table that he issued the invitation to gather together, to share together and to remember together, and to go and do likewise with all of creation and all God's created people. It was as they gathered in the upper room three days prior that Jesus took a loaf of bread, gave thanks, and offered it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, for this is the bread, the covenant of life that is broken for each and every one of you. And each time you eat of this, remember me. And then he took a cup. And upon the blessing of that cup, he passed it to each of his followers and said, 
Take and drink, for this is the cup of the new covenant, which is shared for you. I am the true vine, and within this cup is shared all the love and grace that God has to share with each and every one of you. And so when you drink and when you share of this cup, remember me. And so on this day of resurrection joy, we raise our voices to proclaim this and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make us lovers and tellers of your word. Make us healers and bestowers of your grace. And make us one body in Jesus Christ. For all glory and honors are yours, almighty God, now and forever and for all time. Amen. And as we share in the bread or whatever you have in front of you, if we can't wait to bite into that morsel of goodness, then go ahead and do so. Maybe it's a piece of chocolate. But I do invite you also to share and let us virtually eat and drink this meal together. As we do so, as one with God, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Let us see. broken for you. Remember me.
cup of resurrection joy poured out for you. And each and every time that you drink of this cup, remember me. Let us pray. Ever loving, ever present, grace filled God of joy. For this meal that we have shared this day, and make us ever mindful of the new hope and the new possibilities, the new challenges, and all of your love in the words shared with us not to be afraid, but to go forward with passion, joy, and hope. May we be filled with your peace this day, and may we share it with all in Christ's name. Amen. Our hymn of going forth this morning, number 173. Thine is the glory, number 173.
And so we go forth on this day of joy with the possibility of new life that surrounds each and every one of us. We'll go with that resurrected love, the glory of God, the peace of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit to continue to guide us on our way through this path and journey. And it is with the fulfillment of this love that we are offered resurrection this day. For Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. Amen.